Good afternoon, and welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission. It is Thursday, March 20th. Can we have roll call, please? Commissioners Derhovanesian? Yes. Kevanian? Here. Lee? Here. Sharikian? Yes. Chairperson Deaver? Here. The agenda for the March 20th meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on March 14th, 2014. Next item. Item 2, consent items. At 2A, approval of meeting minutes from February 20th, 2014. I will move the minutes. I'll second. Roll call. Commissioners Derhavonesian? Yes. Kevanian? Yes. Lee? Yes. Sharikian? Yes. Chairperson Deaver? Yes. Next item. <clears throat> item 3, introductions and presentations. At 3A, library arts and culture events presented by Chuck Wyke, Community Relations Manager. Yeah. Uh, Chairperson Deaver, commissioners, and library staff, city staff, it's really good to see you today. We are just about to open up Brand Library. People in this room will be there, I hope, on, on Saturday for the gala event. Uh, that's in the evening, 6 o'clock. So get there early and go home early if you want. Can't hear me? Oh. Uh, we have a number of other events. The actual ribbon cutting will be uh, will be March 27th, which is a Thursday at 10:30, and you're certainly invited to that. Um, we'll have a number of others, including the first art gallery re reception, which will be the 29th, which is Saturday, and then finally there'll be a big day in the park on March 30th. That's from uh, noon to four. That's the entire Brand Park. Anything you can imagine, food trucks, climbing walls, a big band jazz up on the, the new plaza up at the Brand Library. Uh, we're going to have a lot going on. So uh, the park and the library, every, everybody's really excited for that, and we expect a lot of families that day. So to fill you in on what's been going on uh, with library arts and culture, we did have Chris Bojalian uh, a couple of weeks ago talked about his book, uh, The Sandcastle Girls. Uh, he was interviewed again by Artie Kasaki and our, our city clerk, a real good audience, about 300 people. That's a picture of Cindy with our, our author. Um, again, the gala is, is uh, Saturday. You can still buy tickets old up until 4 p.m. Friday. You can go through glendalearts.org to get those tickets. Uh, there's a nice new shot. The fencing is down. I, I know they're working on the, uh, uh, the grounds there to make it real spiffy, but it, it's, it's really a great-looking site. Uh, really, it's been restored, and it's lovely. Um, upcoming events. Upcoming, uh, there's a couple of calls for artists. You, of course, know about uh, your utility box mural program, uh, but there's also one that uh, Metro, the uh, transit uh, folks have, uh, they're calling for an artist pool. The pool will be good for three years, and these people will have an opportunity to uh, decorate some of the transit, metro transit sites. We just sent the call out for that on our eye contact and uh, put it on the Brand Library website. Uh, coming up at Brand Library, uh, after all the gala, after all the gala, then it's business as usual. Uh, if if you have an event practically every every week, uh, we've got Mark Robson. He's a fine pianist. Uh, works a lot with the L.A. Phil. Uh, he's a great rehearsal pianist, uh, and he's known all over the world. He's going to be playing piano and toy piano with us on April 6th, and this is going to be the kickoff concert for the music series up there, and that's sponsored by the Brand Associates. Uh, I should mention uh, among the compositions, he's going to be playing uh, 15 new one-minute pieces, and this is uh, from a, a group called Vox Novus out of New York. Uh, they call their, uh, their structure 15 Minutes of Fame. And so people call for uh, performance pieces limited to a minute. Uh, we have submissions from as far away as Italy, Portugal, and Ohio. Uh, they are from all over, 
all over the United States, but also internationally. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Maggie McClure is a local singer-songwriter. She actually lives in Glendale. She has a number of songs that she's already placed. She's very young. She's placed them on uh, television and uh, uh, motion pictures. And she's going to be at the library, uh, and that's going to be part of the Arts and Culture Commission series, which I'm sure you know about also. That will be April 13. Um, uh, beyond books, visual arts, uh, we have a computer lab. When we open the Brand Library uh, up again on the 27th, there will also be a small computer lab, and our staff is going to do a number of programs throughout the year uh, showing people what kinds of resources we have at the Brand Library. And there's just a wealth of things in uh, digital databases and, and those sorts of things. Um, the, they're also going to start uh, what they're calling Book Smarts. It's a lecture series with authors. So the first author is going to be April 6th, and that's Robert Hilburn. He has a fairly new book uh, called Johnny Cash, The Life. You will be talking with Mary McNamara, who is the LA Times television critic. She's going to interview him about his book on Johnny Cash. Uh, he starts at 7, but at 6 o'clock we're going to have a group called the Mighty Cash Cats. That's a tribute band to the late, great Johnny Cash. They're going to perform out in the courtyard for about an hour ahead of time, and, and uh, we're really looking forward to that one. Uh, so there's Brand Library. Um, you know, I hope, hope I see you all up there on, on Saturday or at any of our other events. Uh, we're going to be wide open for business starting the 27th. We have children's programs. We have programs for all ages. Uh, there'll be... There'll be a lot up there, and this is this plaza here, shown at night, is one of the. Uh, that's where Maggie's going to play outside. So we've got a, a number of new venues and, and places where people can get information and uh, enjoy the arts. Finally, there's our our library website. You can get the information for the call for artists there. We'll always post it on the Brand Library site. We've got a Facebook page. Of course, we've got a Twitter page. Uh, we are moving, the city is moving to a new website, and that will happen the 2nd of April. So uh, among all these other things, we're working very hard to make sure that's up and running, and you'll see your information up there, too. Questions? Questions or comments? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next item. Item four, oral communications. And I don't have any cards, so next item, please. Item five, the business agenda at 5A1, recommendation to the city council to approve the artist and performance groups for the performance series program. This uh, performance uh, series program is uh, one of the uh, several arts and culture programs. The uh, Arts and Culture Commission approved as part of its two-year work plan. The intent and the goal of these uh, performance um, series is to create a, a pop-up free public performances in the city. Uh, the commission had identified Brand Library Arts Center Plaza um, as one of the locations, but um, as part of the call for artists, we encouraged existing um, performance groups and artists to uh, submit proposals for other venues beyond Brand Library and Arts Center. So those are the two focus areas. Um, in January, the um, staff uh, released a call for for artists, and we received over 40 submissions. Um, majority of them were for Brand Library and Arts Center. I think there was a lot of excitement to be able to perform in the reopening of the plaza, and we just had a handful um, um, for the citywide program. A selection committee uh, consisting of Arts and Culture Commissioners, Brand Library, and Arts Center staff, as well as Arts and Culture staff, reviewed all of these proposals um, and uh, made a selection of um, 13 um, performance groups and artists um, the um, selection um, uh, 
varies. It's um, we've selected new and established artists and performance groups, um, and includes uh, diverse genres, including classical, jazz, chamber music, drama, and even children's focused opera and world music. So it's going to be a really exciting um, summer uh, program for performing arts. The best part is these are all free and open to the public. Um, these will all be included in both the Brand Library and Art Center calendar of events, as well as uh, the um, the city's calendar of events, as well as Glendale Arts calendar, because um, we're we're trying to create that um, synergy in our city that, where we always have some sort of um, arts and cultural programming. Um, as mentioned, um, a majority of these are for Brand Library and, and Art Center. We have um, 10 scheduled for Brand Library and Art Center Plaza. We only had a few um, proposals come in for um, locations other than Brand Library and Art Center. So we've made three selections. These will be at um, St. Mark Episcopal Church. Um, one is still undetermined, um, um, and the other will be at the Glendale Central Library. That's the children's focused opera. So it's, it's a really exciting um, program. And uh, so we've selected uh, 13 performances. The commission had previously designated $20,000 um, for this series. And we were funding up to $1,000 for each of these performances. And because each um, groups and artists fees varies, we'll have uh, approximately five to $8,000 left over, um, which we can program for spring of next year, since this funding is available through June of next year. So I want you to know that we're not um, using up all of the funds um, that were approved, but we will have some left over. And hopefully, uh, you know, um, towards the end of the year, we can start looking at how we want to program um, that surplus money. And something that we will be doing with this program that we'll do with all of our other programs is do a review after the, the programs have been implemented. So a majority of these programs will um, begin in May and continue through August or September at that, um, you know, after the last uh, performance, we'll provide you with an update of, you know, how much marketing uh, we did, um, specifically the, the performers. That's something that we asked on the application, what the turnout was for each of these performances is, you know, did Friday nights in the summer, was that a good idea? Should we consider another date? And we'll just give a, a snapshot just so the commission and the council have an idea of the economic um, activity that's generated through programs like this so we can also find out what's successful and what's working and um, as we begin to develop our next two-year program, which is just around the corner. And um, that uh, concludes my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Questions from comments? Motion? <laughs> I, I have a brief comment. Um, well, so being on the, on the committee um, for choosing these works along with uh, Commissioner Terho Van um, we actually had a lot of fun because the selections were so wonderful. And actually, um, it, it was interesting to, to see uh, names in the pile that constantly have appeared in other venues and other places. So, or like, you know, I, I went to school with this person or, you know, I've played with this person. Um, staff did an excellent job. Um, I think that overall the committee was um, built of wonderful people who knew uh, what they wanted and what we wanted. Blair Winnington was also a great help, who I've known for, oh, about 10 years or so. And um, so, yeah, I want to say it was really, really fun doing that. And, uh, yeah, leave it at that. Just want to make sure that that's exactly how I felt. Thanks for expressing that. Uh, the fact is that um, it was also a learning process. You know, our staff were so good that um, they came up with such good ideas. They were so organized that helped us to go through everything very quickly. And um, our brand person also, along with uh, Commissioner Kevanian, they're very well informed about the musicians. I was very impressed. Uh, so it was a great experience. Thank you. We have a motion. Can, can, I, can I make the motion? <laughs> and I'll second. I will make the motion. And I second. <coughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Jehovanesian? Yes. Kevanian? Yes. Lee? Yes. Sharikian? Yes. Chairperson Deaver? Yes. Next item. At A2A, recommendation to the City Council to approve a professional services agreement, Glendale Arts for Event Management Firm.
Um, a signature art event is something that the Commission and even the Council have um, expressed interest in as a way to create, um, you know, a lot of um, excitement about arts and culture in the city, but also to attract visitors and to make um, our city uh, an epicenter of arts and culture. Um, the um, Arts and Culture Commission approved a um, request for qualifications at the end of uh, 2013. We issued um, uh, that um, beginning of this year, um, and we were selecting, we were soliciting qualifications and proposals for an event management firm. While we weren't looking for a specific proposal, um, we really wanted to see um, who understood the needs of Glendale. They really understood what we wanted, which was um, an arts-focused event, but that could um, serve um, our all of our economic development goals to attract people to our city and um, and to um, also bring our community members. Without alienating our community members, of course, um, the proposals were reviewed by a selection committee. Um, this committee was the largest uh, because um, this uh, project encompasses so many different city departments. We had um, commissioners Kevanian and Lee, um, library, arts and culture staff, economic development staff, and management services staff. Um, program like this en encompasses all of those different departments, since a lot of our goals are similar. Um, the first step was uh, reviewing the proposals. The selection committee then decided to bring um, the uh, two firms back for um, to for a, a more formal interview, so that we could ask a lot of the questions that we had related to both their qualifications, uh, the needs of our city, as well as um, some uh, concepts that they had um, discussed in their uh, in their uh, proposals. Um, after um, a lot of discussion, um, and this was a, a difficult decision, but um, the one firm that clearly stood out was Glendale Arts. Uh, they really understood the needs of our community. Of course, uh, they're based here and they really, but the most importantly, they understand um, how to outreach to, um, to artists and to be able to put together a quality arts festival. You know, the um, idea it might be simple, but to actually do the work is very difficult and the committee felt that Glendale Arts um, was the key, um, has that key element and component. They understand more marketing, um, traditional new forms of marketing to be able to promote such an event. And they also um, have a lot of experience bringing in sponsors as well as um, putting on an event. So there's a lot of components to an event such as this. Something that uh, we stress was we don't want to have a one-time event. We really want to be able to invest in an event that can grow in future years and hopefully it, be it can become a self-sustaining event You know, after several years because of um, sponsorship development. Um, so, uh, Lisa Glickman, CEO of Glendale Arts, is available to answer any questions. Um, if you have any questions um, for me, I'm happy uh, to answer, but um, we're really looking forward to uh, begin working with Glendale Arts. And just to clarify, the next step uh, would be to take this to the council to authorize that uh, city manager enter into a professional services agreement with Glendale Arts. During that time, we'll begin to develop and fine tune the scope of work, um, what that event costs concept looks like, when that event, um, when it makes sense to actually have that event so that it's successful and we can bring back those details um, at a later date. But this is just the first step to be able to initiate all of those really important steps. Question? I have a question. Commissioner? Um, my question is, we're paying almost $60,000 to organize the festivals. Um, do we have the right to see how they're going to spend the money? For example, advertising, PR, uh, printing, rent, all those details. Who will monitor and who will be controlling that? And how are we transferring the money? Is it step by step, 10, 20 percent at a time? I need some more details. That's sure. Um, that's something that I would monitor as the staff person to arts and culture. Um, once, uh, um, in order for a professional services agreement to even go through our process, Glendale Arts will need to be able to provide us with the scope of work, and that's something I'll work with them to define is exactly what they're um, providing, what service they're providing to us, and that includes the actual event management, developing the concept, marketing, all of those details. But also, they need to give us um, uh, a breakdown of a budget and when we bill them. So uh, the city never bills anybody up front for anything. It's actually uh, a schedule of payments that we will determine. And once um, specific, um, you know, um, 
services are met, then um, you know I would authorize payment. Then it would go to our finance department, who makes sure we have the funding. And so there's a lot of checks and balances in, in, um, in place. But I'm happy to uh, bring an overview of you know once we define what that schedule looks like, um, you know through a memo or through a presentation to the commission, just so you're aware. But that's something I would manage um, with uh, Glendale Arts. I can do second question. Uh, my second concern is about the programming. Uh, how we're going to define the art festival? What programs? The kids program, professional musicians, orchestra. We need to have an idea how we're heading towards where, so we can see the light. So. That, that's actually one of the items that uh, you know Glendale Arts is charged with doing. Um, um, even though uh, we do have you know experience and expertise in developing um, events, um, one of the uh, requirements of this RFP was to be able to provide that um, turnkey service for us. So Glendale Arts will develop that program that I'll review. Um, what I can say and assure you, what they've proposed to us is it's definitely something that I think um, both our community and people beyond our community community would love. It's a, a, a two, um, um, you know, it's two um, pronged approach to the event, but I'll let uh, Elisa explain it a little bit better. Sure. Thank you, Annette. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Deaver, members of the Arts and Culture Commission, as Annette mentioned, I'm Elisa Glickman. I'm the CEO of Glendale Arts. And in answer to your first question, uh, the 50000 plus the $10,000 contingency is actually a piece of what we look at as a much larger overall budget. The budget that we originally submitted in our RFP was um, somewhere in the neighborhood of $250,000 to $300,000 because festivals of this magnitude are, are obviously an expensive endeavor. So it's our responsibility responsibility to make up the additional funding in order to make this festival move forward. That being said, we really envision this as a festival within a festival, um, meaning that there will be daytime activities that are very family-centered, family-oriented. We'll have a kid's zone. We're working with some sponsors now that we know that this is moving forward to really say, this is your area. How do we want to program this? Um, and make it both a artistically driven area as well as something that, that is very experiential, something that they can really play and experience and grow within in that movement, whether it's music or visual arts, that will all be a part of that kid zone. Um, throughout the festival itself, we'll be working with um, the Arts for the Ashes production company to um, do a juried portion arts festival. So they will solicit artists, they will manage the whole artist vendor component, they will have a very strict application process that we will vet through our team as well and we'll subcontract that component to them. And then in terms of the performing arts itself, there'll be a variety of different artists on both the main stage and a secondary stage throughout the day. Um, and one of the ideas that we're touring, which, which I know Commissioner Kivanian was very excited about, was doing um, something because we also manage the Alex Theater. So how do we build a buzz leading into this big festival? One of our ideas is to create for lack of a better term, a battle of the bands. And the battle of the bands, they'd be duking it out for a spot on the main stage before the featured performer. So we really want to attract not just Glendale artists, but a Los Angeles area-wide artists, some that are new, undiscovered talent. Um, and as I said, they will really work with us to help build that brand for our first year festival. So as, as Annette pointed out, we don't have all the details hammered out because we're sort of in the early plan stages and we do see this as a marathon and not a race um, so we're looking at the first year trying to get it off the ground creating the infrastructure and creating a successful event so that it grows year after year and we start to add layers and pieces to it as we go through um, again because we see this as a festival within a festival the daytime activities will later convert into evening activities like beer gardens and food trucks and we'll work with local retailers as well as businesses, restaurants, bars to really have a presence at the event even if they have a brick and mortar presence on the boulevard or in the general downtown arts and entertainment zone. So our staff has been wanting to do something like this for a long time so uh, this is really an exciting opportunity for us. Um, well, I want to say that personally I feel very comfortable with the choice that was made because Glendale Arts is kind of to me is like our own baby, is our own 
homegrown. It is, they know how it works in the city. They have the pulse of the community. There might be many good competing other organizations who might be very good for that, but they might not know our community as well as Glendale Arts does. So somehow they are the roots and they are here for so long and we feel so committed to Glendale Arts and I think Glendale Arts feels so committed to us. So as far as the details, I'm sure it's going to be rehashed by the staff and hopefully it would come to the commission as a courtesy or whichever the direction is. But I'm 100% sure what they choose because when I see what they sent via email, all the programs that they have, or they organize throughout the year, even for during the Christmas time, they have a good variety. I look through every one of them and I check and see. They try to make sure that they reach out to all age groups, they reach out to all different kind of tastes and uh, you know, uh, intellectual or emotional backgrounds of the community. So uh, it, it is a very good choice, and I want to congratulate. The rest of the details, I'm sure the other commissioners will work on that and our staff. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Commissioner Kivanian. Just a, a brief comment. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, we all know Elisa's capabilities, and uh, she is, uh, well, uh, first I want to thank staff, actually, because this was, this was a tough choice. Uh, we, we had only two, so it was just like, um, which one do we go? And it was, it was really interesting to see how an outside of Glendale organization would compete against an inside of Glendale organization. And it was funny to see how, uh, and of course it's clearly obvious that Glendale Arts knows what <laughs> Glendale's about, so there's no real competition in that. So, and of course that was one of the major uh, dis uh, deciding factors of, other, of it all. But uh, the staff was extremely helpful in, in this case. Uh, Dan and Cher or Cheryl were, I mean... Sharon. Sharon, sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> it's been like two weeks. Um, uh, so they were extremely helpful. Um, they, they both had experience, a lot of experience doing um, events, and especially in Glendale. And um, again, uh, our decision was uh, not... Uh, it, it, was, it was very highly influenced by a lot of the expertise that they brought to the table. And of course, Glendale Arts is extremely deserving. And uh, I better be the judge at the uh, <laughs> at the uh, the rock band competition. Um, I made a joke about that at the at the presentation. So um, yeah, I'm extremely happy about this decision. And uh, I will go ahead and make a motion. I actually have a. Of course, thank you. <laughs> I can still make the motion. Then you can you can make the motion. You'd like to make the motion? Yes. Yes, I would like All to right. make. All right. Um, before we. Uh, second on that. I just I also had a comment. I I wasn't part of that selection committee. I, I also know Glendale Arts's work and really excited about that opportunity as well. The only thing I would throw out there too, because I wasn't part of that, so I just want to get my thoughts out on on the table, is um, just because you know the arts community so well in Glendale, it'll be I I hope and know that you will look to that which differentiates Glendale artists. So when I think about Glendale, I think a lot about arts and economic opportunities, a lot of our fashion designers, our product designers, our animation, our other studios. And when I hear rock bands and food trucks and things like that, I, I, it feels a little bit repetitive. I, I mean, it's, it sounds fantastic and wonderful to have everybody come out and, and do all that, but I just want to make sure, and I know you're thinking about this, but that it will be distinctive in that we can own that and, and, and brand that as it moves forward. Please. Uh, so the easy answer is yes. So our, our, our vision for this, our, our goal for this, and I know we share this with the Arts and Culture Commission, is to position this event so that it shows off what's special and unique about Glendale, but also appeals to a much wider base. And that's a delicate balance, and that's going to take us some time to sort of sort through. But there are, um, as Commissioner Doviastian pointed out, there are some really distinct things that set Glendale apart from any other community, um, and we're aware of those. And we are working with subcontractors and partners that are also aware of that and very sensitive to that. So while I can't guarantee that we'll have you know, a set decorator section or a fashion section, at least in the first year, we do know that we want to create um, we want to give artists who have a level of expertise, a level of creativity that, are, that is special and unique to this community, and then also offer those who are coming outside this community something for their palate as well. So it, it will be a delicate balance, and it's something that we will absolutely strive for. Thank you. Thank you. Last question. Uh, when is it going to happen? 
<laughs> I, I, yeah, I think that's some, that's something we have to look at. Um, so after the contract is approved, this uh, summer? Uh, no, no, it's not going to happen this summer. Uh, we, you know, I think when we first started talking about it, that was a year and a half away. So we had thought about September 2014, but it's definitely um, not this summer. I think once uh, the professional services agreement is signed um, and we can start working, that's one of the first things we have to look at is to pick a, a date that's going to work in the community, but also on a regional level that we're not competing against another event. So when that date is selected, I'll, we'll bring that back to the commission and we'll start um, promoting that date as the date for our event. And, and to Ms. Bartanian's point, the, um, what we're doing right now is we're actually looking LAY within a 25-mile radius of what festivals, what outdoor events, what is taking place in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County overall, um, and then what is specifically happening in Glendale. The worst thing that we could do, and I'm just throwing this out as an example of the worst thing we could do, is plan our downtown festival the same week as, say, the Montrose Arts and Crafts Festival. Um, so we're looking at those types of things. You know, it, it, there are some events that take place in Venice Beach um, that may not be huge competition for us, but we also may not want to be on the same weekend, especially as we're building a brand. So that's all part of what we've called our research and development phase, and we're sort of in the midst of that now. Um, so when we get to the scope of work, um, on our way to the contractual uh, portion, we'll have that research sort of done and we'll have a tentative time frame. Right now we're sort of leaning towards the April-May period, but as we start to do our research, that time frame may not be logical for us. 2015. 2015, that's correct. No, next week. No, uh, yeah, we, we, we feel given the budget, the scope of the project, and, and how important this project is on so many levels, not only for the Arts and Culture Commission, not only for the city, most especially for Glendale Arts, we really need at least 12 to 13 months to plan this properly and get it right. So we don't want to come out of the box with any mistakes. We want to grow and not fix. So that's why we're really trying to give ourselves a 12 to 13 month lead time, at least. Thank you. Other questions? Um, just a request. Um, uh, I don't know how we could fit this in, but this was an idea that I liked very much. What happened this year for the Art Prize in Michigan was that uh, that special day, um, for a month, artists were putting all their work in different stores and different streets and everywhere in public places, and it was juried on a given date, and there was a special prize. Something that would gather artists, and it, this is international, at an international level. So imagine if our city would be really musicians and artists and all the different forms of art would be involved in coming and doing and presenting and being acknowledged. I don't know how big that is. I know Commissioner Kevanya would say, again, that's my Wagnerian way of having everything big and etc. But nonetheless, uh, it, later on, you know, it would be interesting to look into that because I really want our whole city to be involved. So you can organize it, but the city should be part of it, all different Absolutely. businesses and etc. So that could help it, everyone. It's certainly a great opportunity to get the word out to the much broader community. And I think that somewhere down the line, it may be be um, appropriate for us to look at some of your other um, grantees uh, that are doing the public work, public art spaces, and see how, again, possibly not in the first year, but see how those projects also fit into the larger scope. So those are, those are incredible. They're about ready to get off the ground. I know that the contract is now complete for those. No. No, not yet. They're working on the contract for those. Um, but that may be something as they start to build their brand that we see some, some symbiotic relationships between our festival, their public art, their public spaces. We do have a visual arts component built into it. We don't know what the pre-event details will be. But again, I think it's a great opportunity to collaborate with other partners that are already doing that work so that there's a natural buzz that's created leading into this larger culminating event. So I think that's a really good idea and very valid. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll we second have a, the motion. Motion floor second. <laughs> roll call, please. Commissioners Derhavanesian? Yes. Kevanian? Yes. Lee? Yes. Sharikian? Yes. Chairperson Deaver? Yes. Next item. Item six, commission staff comments. Well, I have one. 
And that is, uh, I wanted to say Happy New Year to our Iranian uh, population in Glendale and all over because I know some people are watching us through their computers because they cannot get GTV6. Uh, I want to say Happy New Year, Eid Mubarak, which is in Persian, may it be a year full of bounty and blessing and abundance. Uh, and that is number one. Uh, after saying my greetings to our Iranian population in Glendale and elsewhere, I want to say that the experiences that we go through is fantastic as commissioners, and maybe I should announce this because we are short of time in a way, because commissioner, I'll have uh, Commissioner Kevanyan to explain some more, but we are in collaboration with Glendale Unified School District. I mean, he is. He wants to be, um, they, he wants to recruit our young musicians to come and be in the little uh, orchestra. So, Commissioner Kevanyan, this is a good venue because lots of people are watching before the uh, flyer gets to all the staff at the sites and etc. because it has been, we have, have been in communication with uh, the authorities at Glendale Unified School District. But I want to jump the gun and have it a little bit faster because those teachers and parents and musicians who are listening, I want to listen to Commissioner Kevanyan on that note. Commissioner Kevanyan? Whenever it gets to me. Do you have other? Uh, just, I want you to explain a little bit about this well, orchestra. I, I, I will in a second, when it's my turn. Is what? When it's my turn, I, I will. Okay. Do so, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Other? I have oh, one. Oh, I have one. Commissioner um, Shreve. Glendale Youth Center and Saldabad Bookstore and the ex-commission member Razmik, they're putting together a art exhibition on April 18, 19th, 20th in Glendale Youth Center. So please, if you have time, stop by. It's uh, on Maple Street or uh, corner of Maple and uh, Central. Is there a time? Uh, six to nine. Friday and sun Saturday is Sunday too. April, you said? 18, 19, 20th. Commissioner Lee? I just wanted to uh, put out my heart to any family members of Flight 370, and hopefully, you know, the family members are somewhere. That's it. Commissioner Kvanian. Um, as uh, Commissioner Der Derhovana said, kind of, uh, she gave it away. No, I'm kidding. Um, thank you for that uh, friendly reminder that I have to bring up an item. Uh, as you all know, well, a lot of you know, I'm working with the Lark Musical Society uh, now, and uh, I am in charge of their orchestra there, and I've been uh, tasked to um, basically extend the number and to enlarge the orchestra and to do a lot of outreach through GUSD, through any kind of means that I have. And um, I'm hosting an open house a week from Saturday on the 29th of March. And uh, our orchestra meets from 9 in the morning to 11 o'clock. Don't worry, we'll have coffee, I promise, um, for the parents and even some of the kids who are a little bit older who drink mm -hmm. coffee. <laughs> of course, I would. I, I hated coffee at that age, but it doesn't matter. Um, uh, we're doing a lot of fun repertoire with with these kids. Uh, it's not a very large orchestra at the moment, but um, uh, wonderful things happen in small packages, and I'd like to think that that's what we have going on right now at Lark. Of course, we'd like to see you know 3,000 kids playing in an orchestra and then having me with my Mickey Mouse hands and the Mickey Mouse hat conducting this orchestra, and like Fantasia, of course. Um, but that, that's that. And uh, for further information, uh, you can go ahead and contact uh, Lark Musical Society at 818-500-9997. And, uh, of course, you can, if you can contact me, go for it. If you can find me somehow, <laughs> you can go ahead and contact me as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to note, because I, this is a, something I have been working on organizing, a film screening at the Glendale Central Library next Tuesday evening, the 25th, of Misrepresentation. It is a documentary film from 2011, and it is still highly significant in that it look, talk, looks at how media misrepresents women across the board. So we're talking books, movies, films, um, the news, publishing, 
and how that misrepresentation leads to their underrepresentation in in positions of leadership and, and, and power and influence in our country and encourages women to get more involved in that sector and help people think about how they um, approach the media and, 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 and take in the media a little bit differently. So I encourage all to attend. It is a free screening. We have a wonderful speaker uh, coming from the Occidental College. She is the chair of the politics department. Caroline Heldman will be our speaker, and she's also in the film itself as well to, to lead a discussion following the film. So 7 o'clock next Tuesday at the Central Library. Other comments? Okay, next item. Item 7, written communications. And I, just for the record, I did receive um, something from Timothy Leon Wall, which has been um, passed along to staff. I don't believe we have any others. Next item. Item eight, adjournment. And we are adjourned.